Here we go. Are you ready? Let's get going. But I'm still deciding. Which one should I take? Yuika, what are you doing? You'll be late. I'm choosing which handkerchief to take with me. This one with bunnies on it is cute. But this bear is really cute too. Mommy, what do you think? Which one should I take with me today? Hmm, let me ask them. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mommy, what is it? I asked them what they think. The bunnies say that they want to go with you to preschool today. Mr. Bear says that he wants to take a nap. So he's going to stay at home. Really? They said that? Okay, then I'll take the bunnies with me. Bye-bye, Mr. Bear. My name is Masato. I'm 28 years old. I'm a single mother to my four-year-old daughter, Yuika, and we live together in a small apartment building. My husband passed away in a traffic accident when she was just a few months old, so she probably doesn't have much memory of him. All the time, I was so distressed by my husband's sudden passing that there were times when I had silently wished that I had gone with him. I couldn't bear living without him, and every day was too painful to bear. But despite the loss of my husband, I still had Yuika. I had to protect her. My parents supported me through the first couple of years, and I finally managed to get back on my own two feet and push forward towards the future. All right, once you've got your handkerchief in your bag, let's go to the bus stop. The preschool bus might be waiting for us. Okay, Daddy, I'm going now. Yuika doesn't have any memories of her dad, but after watching me say goodbye and I'm home to a picture of my husband by the front door for the past few years, she's picked up the habit of giving him a greeting whenever she leaves to. I'll see you later, Yuika. Have fun today. Be good. Yeah! After watching Yuika get into the preschool bus safely, I went back home to get ready for work and drove to the office. I work full-time at an insurance company as a desk worker. It's a company I started working for when Yuika first entered preschool, and I enjoy working there a lot. By the way, I didn't work for a while after my husband had passed away. I didn't have the spirit or the strength to do anything except take care of Yuika, and kept myself shut indoors when she was still a baby. Until I regained the confidence to go out and find a job, I had been relying on the savings I had in my account. I've got to do better if Yuika's goal is doing her best at preschool. When I finally thought that, I felt I could do anything. Even though I may be working full time, I'm still a single mother. I had my own doubts about whether I'd be able to afford to pay for preschool and wondered whether I should just hire a babysitter until Yuika was ready to go to kindergarten. But after taking a look at a few preschools and nurseries in the area, I found that this preschool suited Yuika's personality the best, and I felt that she would have more fun if she were able to have fun with other children her age. Preschool finished at 2 p.m. every day, but they offered a daycare service for parents who worked and could watch Yuika until I'd finished my shift at work. They had plenty of games, facilities, and staff to ensure that my daughter was safe and having fun. Fortunately for me, my company was very understanding of the difficulties of parenthood, and we're very cooperative whenever something happened to. Phew, I'm finally finished. All right, now I can eat my lunch. Just when I started laying my lunch out on my desk, my colleague sitting at the desk next to mine stood and called out to me. Ooh, your lunch always looks really delicious, Miss Saddle. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really flattered, but it's really just the leftovers of the things I made for my daughter. Look, I've even got fried bread crust in here. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I really do look up to how you manage to prepare lunch for your daughter and yourself every morning. Isn't it really tough when you've got work? Well, yeah, it's tough. I won't deny that. But seeing my daughter's face light up when she sees what I've made for lunch just makes it all worth it. Hmm? It's for my daughter's preschool. Hello? Hello? This is Suzuki from Moni Moni Preschool. Is this Yuika's mother? Yes. This is Masato. I'm sorry to bother you, but it looks like Yuika's gotten a fever. We've put her to sleep, but... What? She's sleeping in the nurse's room, but we were wondering if it's possible for you to come and collect her. Y yes, of course. I'll be right there. I ended the phone call and headed straight to my manager's office to let him know what had happened. And the moment I told him, he told me to hurry up and go see her. If anything, I ended up being told off for making her wait. I had brought Yuika to the office several times before, and when I did, everyone was always showering her with attention. They were just as worried as I was about her and rushed me out of the office. I was fortunate that I had such considerate colleagues. I headed to Yuika's preschool and entered the nurse's room, where she was supposedly waiting for me. 
Yuika, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I don't feel bad anymore. So we don't have to go to the doctors. Please? Yuika, I know you don't like it, but you've got to go and see your doctor, okay? Miss Suzuki, thank you so much. It's no problem. She was sleeping until a few minutes ago, so she's gotten very hyperactive again. But I just want you to know that her fever still hasn't gone down. I understand. I'll be taking her to the hospital now. Thank you. Come on, Yuika. Say thank you to Miss Suzuki for taking care of you. Thank you, Miss Suzuki. I'll see you soon, Yuika. Let's play again when you feel better. Yeah! I scooped up Yuika in my arms and left the nurse's room. When I got out of the building, I came across the other moms who were coming to pick up their children. Oh yeah, it's already 2 p.m. Preschool's over, so they're all coming to collect their kids. The parents that don't use the daycare service that's available after preschool and either have their children get on the bus that leaves at 10 past, or the parents and guardians come and collect their children themselves by 2 p.m. and take them home. I'm pretty sure that Sachiko was part of the latter. I don't want to bump into her if she's coming here. Oh my, if it isn't Misato. What are you doing here? Great timing. She must have read my mind or something. Uh, oh, hi. It's rare for you to be here at this time of day. We never see you. Oh yeah, Yuika got a fever, so I was called down. A fever? Is that so? Poor darling. It must be the stress. Excuse me? I heard that Yuika's always the last one to go home, isn't she? Even out of the daycare kid. That's got to be stressful for her, the poor child. I'm well aware that Yuika must feel lonely while she's waiting for me to go and pick her up. But I don't have any choice. I've got to earn money for the both of us, and I don't want her to miss out on something because we can't afford it. That's why I make up for that by spending as much time with her as possible when we're at home. Yuika herself says that she enjoys playing with Miss Suzuki while she's waiting for me. There's no reason why I should let a complete stranger tell me what's right and what's wrong when it comes to raising my child. I'm sorry. I've got to take her to the hospital, so I've got to go. Excuse me. I held Yuika closer to me and rushed toward where I parked my car. However, Sachiko only raised her voice, loud enough for me to hear, and started talking to the other moms that happened to be close by. She says that she's working full-time, but she really must be working a part-time job. I bet she's lying just so that she can avoid taking part in the PTA meetings. Or she's just embarrassed to admit that she's not capable of getting a job anywhere. <laughs> right. And don't you think her sense of fashion is just awful? She's got no idea what's on trend right now. Do you really think so? Of course I do. If she was working full time, she should be able to afford more decent clothing, don't you think? Look at me in comparison. I'm a housewife, but everything I'm wearing is hot couture. Even this bag I'm holding is designer. I really am doing my best as a full-time worker. So, what if I like buying clothes from Maniklo? The designs are simple, but they're comfortable and easy to move around in. I can wear everything to work and in private. Will, your husband earns a lot, so I'm not surprised. That's true. But to be honest, I wish he'd work a little harder. I'm not satisfied with his current position. I need a lot more pocket money. As you can see, Sachiko is a type of woman that likes to bring other people down so that she can feel good about herself. Especially when it comes to single mothers like me, who seem to be her favorite targets. On top of that, it seems that it's her second son who's currently attending this preschool, and his older brother already went on to elementary school last year. She uses that as a reason to lord it over the new mothers whose children only started preschool this year. Are you angry because I got a fever? I'm sorry. What? No, of course not. I'm sorry too. My eyes just started hurting, that's all. Let's go. Pain, pain, go away. Don't ever come back this way. Oh, that's amazing. It doesn't hurt anymore? Thank you, Yuika. Ugh, damn it. I don't have the time to be thinking about that annoying old lady. The hospital. After that, I took Yuika to the hospital to get looked at by her doctor. I was relieved to hear that it was just a regular cold and that she would get better after some good rest. She took two days off of preschool and was delighted to see Miss Suzuki when she rushed to get on the bus. How's Yuika doing? Is she feeling better? Yes, she's recovered from her cold. Thank you for letting me take some time off at such last notice. Thank goodness! 
We were all so worried. Oh, by the way, I finished up the documents you were halfway through the other day. Don't worry about anything. Thanks, really. I'm sorry I dumped everything on you suddenly. It's fine. I might need you to cover for me one day when I have kids, too. You don't have to thank me for anything now. Of course I will. Misato, if it's too much of a burden coming into the office, you can always work from home, you know? That way you can spend more time with Yuika. You don't have to worry about your pay going down. You'll still get the same salary whether you're here or working from home. Yes, I'll think about it. Thank you so much. Hmm. I was planning on picking her up from daycare at the time I usually do, but it's Yuika's first day back at preschool. I've already finished everything that needs to be done at the office, so maybe I'll do as I was advised and take the rest home. I gathered all the documents I could take home and went to pick Yuika up from daycare. Mommy, what about work? I thought I'd come pick you up earlier and do the rest of my work from home. Yuika, can you be a good girl and play quietly until I finish? Yeah, I can, I can. Good for you, Yuika. Have fun with your mom this evening. Yeah, let's finish our drawing tomorrow, Miss Suzuki. I'm going home early today. Yeah, of course. I'll see you tomorrow, Yuika. I thanked Miss Suzuki and headed toward the parking lot with Yuika. Oh, if it isn't Misato and Yuika, did you take another day off from work today? I knew it. I had a feeling she'd turn up. No, I haven't taken the day off. I'm going to work from home during the afternoon. What? You're going to work from home? Oh, do you mean you've taken up a side job making boxes at home or something? The sort of thing poor people do for extra cash? Sachiko paused after she spoke and snorted down her nose at me. She's definitely misunderstood what I've said. And what's so funny about doing a side job? Why is she looking down on it as a bad thing? This is why she's so... It must be tough. I'm not very good at those kinds of repetitive, complicated tasks. I'd hate to have to make the same mocks hour after hour. Yeah, well, everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. And I heard that you only get 10 cents for every 100 boxes you make in those kinds of jobs. Just how desperate do you have to be to do that kind of work? I'd hate to do that. It's pathetic. <laughs> Well, every family has their own circumstances. There might be someone out there who needs to be at home and happens to be good at making those boxes. Circumstances? What kind of circumstances would make them want to do that? Aren't they ashamed that that's all they're good for? I'd be so embarrassed, I'd faint. I'd be more embarrassed to be you and say the things you do. Anyway, is that your car over there? Yes. What about it? Just, how old is it? It's practically falling apart. <laughs> well, I did buy it secondhand, and it was already an old model when I found it. My car isn't brand new, but it's not like it's covered with rust and dents. There was nothing about it that gave her the right to say that it was falling apart. It was just a normal car you'd find running on the streets anywhere in town. If it's secondhand, then that must mean that somebody was using it before you bought it, right? How do you know that it wasn't a stinky old man that was using it? It's disgusting, just... Thinking about it, if it were up to me, I'd definitely buy a new car. And I wouldn't buy a boring old domestic car either. It's got to be an exotic sports car. Sachiko pointed toward her own car and began bragging about how she had gone out and bought it just the other day. I didn't even bother to listen to her. Your perfume stinks way more than my car does. And I don't care if it belongs to an old man. I'm just glad that it didn't belong to a woman with that same perfume. Ugh. Oh, really? Good for you. Mommy, can we go home now? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. Yuika, let's go home. What? Your daughter can't even wait for the adults to finish talking? She's lesser than a pet dog. How impatient. I didn't care what Sachiko said about me, my clothes, or my car. I just had to grit my teeth and bear with the irritation. But I couldn't keep quiet if she was going to insult my daughter. I led Yuika to the car and got her set up in the child seat. And then, so that she couldn't hear our conversation, I shut the door and returned to where Sachiko was standing. I've had enough of you. Will you please cut it out? What's your problem? What are you talking about? I don't have any problem with you. I'm just saying what I think, that's all. What's wrong with that? Whatever. There's nothing else I can say to you. I'm leaving. Sachiko seemed to be saying something, but I ignored her and got into the car. I started the engine and backed out of my parked space. Mommy, what's wrong? You look really scary again. 
Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. It's nothing. Why don't we sing the Manapan Men's theme song on the way home? It doesn't matter how old my car is, as long as we have fun and we get to where we're going. I felt like all my worries had flown away when I heard Yuika's cute singing voice from the back seat, and it didn't take long for me to join in with her. By the time we got home, I had completely forgotten the conversation I had with Sachiko and was smiling again. I managed to finish all the work that had piled up this week, and before I knew it, it was Saturday. My day off had finally come around, and I was getting ready to go out. Misato, how are you? Kakaru, I'm sorry I made you wait. This gentleman is Kakaru. One year ago, we met through the introduction of a friend, and we've been meeting frequently ever since. He's seven years older than I am, but even at the young age of 35, he's the CEO of an IT company. We first started officially dating around six months ago, but it wasn't exactly a smooth process. I felt that dating someone new would mean that I had fallen out of love with my husband and was a little cautious about dating again. But Kakaru listened to my worries and accepted everything, including my remaining feelings for my late husband. He told me that dating him didn't mean that I had to forget about my husband and assured me that he loved me the way I am. He was so sweet and so caring that I couldn't say no to dating him. Oh, you didn't bring Yuika with you today? Yeah, my parents told me that they would watch her for the day. They said that they wanted me to relax and have some time to myself. So I told them that I would be back to collect Yuika this evening. All right, then let's go and pick her up together. We can go out and have dinner, all three of us. Yeah, I'd love that. Thank you. Even during our date, Kakaru would point at a dress and mention how it would suit her and would say that he wanted to take Yuika and I to a theme park the next time we met. He was always thinking of a way he could make both Yuika and I happy and show just how much he cared, not only for me, but for Yuika too. I'm so happy that Kakaru's getting along so well with Yuika too. He's so kind. But in the middle of our date, I realized that a familiar face was walking towards us from the other side of the food hall we were in. The woman was linking arms with the young man next to her. Huh? What? What are you doing here? What are you doing? What's she panicking about? She's usually insulting me by now. I wonder what's up. I'm just here to do some shopping. How about you? Oh, oh really? What a coincidence. Hmm? Is this her husband? He looks a lot younger than he did at last year's sports day. No, isn't he a completely different person? Sachiko's husband had left a pretty big impression on everyone when he won the parent-child relay race at the sports day last year, so I remembered his face quite clearly. But the man in front of me wasn't as old, and I didn't remember Sachiko's husband being this tall either. When I realized that, I couldn't help but doubt. Wait, is she having an affair? Well, I'll see you next week, Masato. Sachiko turned on her heel and rushed off in the opposite direction, as though she were running away from something. Hmm. What's the matter? Well, the truth is, uh, let's go sit in a cafe or something. We can talk about it there. I told Kakaru everything, including the suspicion I had about who Sachiko was with. When I was done, he began thinking with a serious expression on his face. Kakaru, what is it? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking how horrible she is for saying something like that to you. Oh, yeah. Isn't it time for us to pick Yuka up from your parents' house? Oh, yeah, let's go. I was worried about what Kakaru was thinking, but first we had to go and collect Yuika. Oh, wow, this is amazing. After we had collected Yuika, Kakaru had driven us to a place he said had made a reservation at. When we arrived, we found out that it was a restaurant at a hotel and that it was an all-you-can-eat buffet. It had options from all over the world, and there were so many foods that I had never seen before. The children's menu was just as varied in choices, and there seemed to be a lot of families besides us. Yuika, you can eat whatever you like. Don't hesitate to get seconds if you want more. Really? Then I want to eat this really cute cake. Hang on. You can have cake when you're done eating your dinner. Kakaru, you really didn't have to bring us somewhere this luxurious. Are you really sure? Of course I am. I just want you both to enjoy your dinner. I don't care about how much it costs. Since becoming a single mother, I haven't been able to afford many luxuries for my daughter. So I was a little nervous about eating at a hotel for the first time in a long time. But despite that, we each put what we wanted on our own plates and chatted as we ate. We enjoyed a wonderful meal together. And when she was done with her plate, Yuika began eating her cake. Just when our date was about to come to a close, Yuika suddenly asked something I never expected. Hey, Kakaru, I have a question. What is it, Yuika? When are you going to be my daddy? What? Yuika, don't ask that. You're going to make Kakaru uncomfortable. 
Kakuru kept on staring at Yuika with a surprised look on his face. Yuika obviously didn't understand the gravity of the question she was asking and looked curious the longer Kakuru stayed silent. She looked between Kakuru and myself, but I didn't have anything to say either. Of course, I wish that we could become a real family, but, but it's not that easy. I can't expect Kakuru to bear that much. I'm widowed, and I'm a single mother. Yuika, you already have a daddy, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I have a daddy, but he's in heaven right now. I don't really know him, and I've never really had a daddy, but everyone's daddy at preschool is a person like you, Kakuru. That's why I thought it was weird that I don't call you daddy, too. Yuika's still only four years old, but she did her best to share her thoughts and how she felt about Kakuru. It's likely that she doesn't have much memory of my late husband being a dad, since he passed away when she was still a baby. She understands that he's her daddy, but it's probably difficult for her to actually accept the reality of it. On the other hand, Kakuru is the closest thing to a father she has right now, and seems more like a daddy to her than the picture we have on the dresser in the corridor. When comparing herself to the families around us, she must have wondered what makes Kakuru different to the other dads she's seen, and why we still call him by his first name, I think. She may be young, but she's thinking a lot more than I expected. All right. Then how about I become daddy number two? What do you think about that? Would you like that? What? Really? Will you be my daddy? Can I call you daddy from now on? Of course. But it's also your mommy's decision. If she says yes. Mommy, can he be my daddy? Uh, well, it's not like I don't want him to, but... But is there a problem? No, I'm really happy. I'm so happy that you said that, but... Are you really sure? I'm a single mother, and I still... I, I can't let go of my husband yet. I've known all of that ever since we started dating, and my feelings haven't changed. I love Yuika like she's my own daughter, too. I want to be your family, and I don't want you to forget about your husband. You should treasure the feelings you still have for him. He's dead, but he's still alive as long as you remember him. Kakuru? <laughs> Mommy? What's wrong? Does something hurt? Are you okay? Did you eat so much? N no, I'm okay. I I'm just... I'm just really happy, Yuika. But I really didn't expect Yuika to get a head start and say it before I could. You really surprised me, Yuika. What? The truth is, I've been planning on proposing to you. I just didn't know when. But especially after hearing what's been happening at Yuika's preschool, I felt like there was more I could do to support you if we were an official family. I want to be there for you, Misato. And for Yuika, too. He was talking about everything I had told him about Sachiko at the cafe after we had bumped into her earlier in the day. And he was right. I would definitely feel more at ease if we were together. I swear that I'll do everything it takes to make sure that you and Yuika are happy. That's all I want. We can go and visit your husband's grave soon and let him know about our engagement. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Kakuru. Yeah. Yay! I was so happy I couldn't help but think that I might be dreaming, and I felt like my chest would burst open from how fulfilled and excited I felt to be with Kakuru. I'm sure that you'll be more at ease if Kakuru's with me too, won't you? But I'll miss you no matter what. I called out to the husband that still lives on inside me, and imagined that I could see him smiling down at us. And after that, Kakuru and I got married, and prepared the documents necessary for him to adopt Yuika as his own daughter. We moved in together and began a new chapter as a new family. Kakaru told me that I could become a housewife if I wanted to, but I enjoyed my job and felt that it was worth doing. I didn't want to resign, so I made the decision to become a part-time worker and decreased my hours so that I would only be working during the time that Yuika would be at preschool. I could go and collect her when preschool was over and didn't have to leave her in daycare, so the time we could spend together increased and I treasured the time we had. And now, today is the day of the preschool sports day. There isn't a cloud in the sky. It's the perfect weather for a day out in the track. And what about around here? We've got a good view of the entire ground. I found a great spot to lay down our picnic blanket and settle down to watch Uika participate in her sports day. Oh, look. There's a space right here. Excuse me. Do you mind moving down a little? It's Sachiko. This is the worst. I don't want to sit next to her. She's going to ruin the entire day. Hang on, there isn't any space. Are you telling me to move elsewhere? 
Sachiko forcibly moved the picnic blanket I had laid down and sat down on the mat that she had brought with her husband. At least her husband had the shame to look a little apologetic. But it seemed that he and Sachiko were complete opposites because he couldn't say anything to stop her. Huh? I wasn't wrong. This is the face I remember from last year's sports day. The man Sachiko was with was a completely different man. Oh, I didn't realize it was you, Misato. Hi. I heard a rumor saying that you got remarried recently. How's that going for you? Yes, I did. Well, I don't remember telling that many people, but gossip flies around pretty fast. Oh, well, at least it's not bad rumors that are going around. But you've decided not to become a housewife? Yeah, I've decreased my hours, so I've become a part-time employee instead. If you're going to remarry, you should have chosen someone that had the financial stability to support you becoming a housewife. What's the point in marrying if you still have to work? <laughs> I guess this means that you're still as poor as ever. Sachiko's husband was setting up a tripod and camera and didn't seem to hear what Sachiko was saying to me. She didn't pay him any mind and continued. So, where is this new husband of yours? Don't tell me he's working on a day like today. He's gone to the convenience store to buy us some drinks. Oh, there he is. He's coming back. Kakaru raised his arm and waved his hand as he returned. Thanks. No problem. Hey, is that you, Kichima? D director Do you know each other? Yeah, Kichima's an employee at my company. He's a great worker. I rely on him a lot. I was shocked. I never expected that Sachiko's husband was one of Kakaru's employees. Are you sure you haven't mistaken him for someone else? There's no way that Masato's new husband is the director of a company. Hey, don't be rude! How could you say that? I owe Kakeru a lot! It really doesn't bother me. She's probably just frustrated since she's been looking down on Misato as a poor single mother up until now. I can understand that anyone would be surprised. You were what? What have you been saying to Misato? What gives you the right? It's not true. All I said is that it must be tough for her to be a single mother because she's got to work all on her own. I was sympathizing with her. I only stated the truth. A lot of stress had accumulated over the past year because of Sachiko. So I decided to teach her a lesson so that I could vent some anger. So it's fine if you think that you're saying the truth. Great. Then there's something I'd like to share too. I was pretty amazed by how close you are with your younger brother, Sachiko. What? Oh yeah. We bumped into you and your brother when we were on a date a few Saturdays ago. You were very close. What? Oh, um, I guess so. Wait a minute. What do you mean, younger brother? We bumped into each other at the mall. Sachiko had her arm linked with a man that was much younger than her. So I assume that it was her brother? But neither of us have a brother. Who were you with? Wait, no. That was... I'm sorry. Could you tell me when you saw her with that man? Hmm, I think that it was the 10th last month. Sachiko, you told me that you were going to go out and eat lunch with the other moms that day. You lied to me? Who were you really with? Wow, I thought that it was an affair, but I didn't think that it would come to light on today of all days. This is going to be a sports day to remember. Wait, it's nothing like that. He has a child at this preschool. I was just giving him advice. What's so strange about me being friends with a man? He's pretty much a mom. Why do you have to make it seem like I did something bad? Because it seems that you were much closer than just being friends. Anyway, that's not the problem. I've always been suspicious of you. Now I'm sure. Remember this. When this sports day is over, we're going to talk about this when we get home. No! <laughs> This is exactly what I wanted to see. Sachiko's terrified expression is the best. All right, well, I think that's the end of her bullying. She won't bother you anymore. Yeah. That day, Sachiko acted cheerfully enthusiastic when our children were around. But the moment they returned to their events, she was completely silent. I pitied their son because of how much they might suffer if they got a divorce. But it seems that Mr. Kojima had been suspicious of her behavior for a while. They were bound to have gotten divorced regardless of our comments. Oh, look, it's Yuika's turn. Do your best, Yuika! The race began, and Yuika was swinging her arms with all her might and pushing her small body off the ground with her tiny feet. With every step, she got closer to the goal. Go! Go! You can do it! And she crossed the finish line before anyone else. 
All right, yes, you did it! She received a medal for first place to hang around her neck and sprinted over to where we were cheering and waving at her. Mommy! Daddy! You did it! You're amazing! You got first place! You did really well, Yuika. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, and... and... when I crossed the finish line, I saw something twinkle in the sky. It was so pretty. Something twinkled? But there aren't any stars out. I wonder what it was. But it really did twinkle. I saw it. Then it must have been your daddy up in heaven. He was cheering you on and saw you win. Really? It was my daddy? Daddy! I did my best and won! Yuika pulled the gold color medal off of her head and held it up to the sky. There were a lot of things that I had to put up with as a single mother, and there were a lot of times that I felt that it was all too much for me. But I'm really happy right now. Please watch over us from now on. Watch over Yuika as she grows up. A few days later, Hakuru told me that he had heard from Mr. Kojima about the aftermath of that conversation on sports day. Apparently, Mr. Kojima had divorced Sachiko, and he received custody of their son, too. The man that Sachiko had been having an affair with had been after Sachiko's money, or her husband's money, to be precise, and broke up with her as soon as he found out about the divorce. Sachiko had been desperate to get back together with Mr. Kojima ever since, but he's not having any of it. And by the way, she's returned to live with her parents and is currently working from home, making hundreds of boxes every single day. I still remember how she told me that Yuika must be suffering from stress because of my job. I just think that it's a shame that she caused a lot more stress for her own child with this entire affair. I hope that Mr. Kojima and his son find happiness away from Sachiko and make the most of their new lives as a single parent family. <laughs>